What's up everybody? My name is BVM Sirius and welcome back to another Pokemon Go video. The epic conclusion to the season of Heritage is finally here because today is the day of the Pokemon Go Tour Johto event. There's a lot of information to cover in this video, so stay tuned. Alright, so I will cover the information here in just a second, but right now on screen I actually just got a shiny spin rack. This is actually my first shiny spin rack. It was actually released as part of last year's Halloween event which I unfortunately did not get any, but now is my opportunity. And since I actually did pick gold version, I have a higher chance of getting this, and this is a, actually only appears on incense. So with that being said, I am going to golden rass this, throw an ultra ball, secure the catch. I actually like the purple on it. It looks kind of ominous. And so there it is, the first shiny of the event. We also got a Gligar here. It can also, it's also part of gold version, but this one is not shiny. I do need to catch it though for the collection challenges that are part of the event. So that is also the other thing is like there are collection challenges. I think there's 10 of them and you have to pretty much catch all the Johto Pokemon, evolve them all, get them from trades, you know, etc, etc. And also any Johto Pokemon when fully evolved into their final Johto forms that already had community days will learn their respective community day moves. Those of course being uh, Meganium with Frenzy Plant, Typhlosion with Blast Burn, Toad or Feraligatr with Hydro Cannon, Espeon and Umbreon with Last Resort, Jumpluff with its newest move Acrobatics, uh, Tyranitar with Smackdown, there might even be like a couple others that I might be missing, but that's like a good, that's a good bulk of them. Also right now we do have a bunch of different Pokemon appearing in raids, obviously we have the two Johto Regionals, Heracross and Corsola appearing in Tier 3 raids, and we also have all the legendary dogs slash beasts, whatever you want to call them. And Lugia and Ho are also appearing as part of the event as well. And depending on which version you have, you have basically a 1 in 10 chance to get them um, shiny. And also, any Lugia that you catch during the event will learn its exclusive signature move Aeroblast. And any ho that you catch will learn its brand new signature move Sacred Fire. And also, we have a Poliwhirl on screen too. That is because um, some of the Kanto Pokemon actually have Johto based evolutions and they are appearing as part of the event for the purposes of obtaining their Johto evolved forms. Those of course include but are not limited to Poliwhirl for Politoed, Eevee for Espeon and Umbreon, Onix for Steelix, Kingdra for Seedra, Chansey for Blissey, etc. So obviously the, that was just to kind of name a few, but there are obviously more out there. Not to mention Poliwhirl and some of these other Pokemon can be shiny. And I'm also basically just shiny checking all these Pokemon just because I really want some of their shinies. The starters I don't have to worry about because I've already done their community days in the past. So as we said, we do have the research here. So getting into the first set here, it looks like I already completed the uh, two tasks here and all I have to do is just send a gift to a friend and we are pretty much good to go. My main target for this event uh, right now is to get like either like a Hundo Eevee or even an Umbreon. That'd be really cool just so I can have one like an XL for like the Ultra League usage just because Umbreon is so good and so bulky. And also believe it or not the legendary dogs or beasts Raikou, Entei, and Suikin are also have an opportunity to appear in the wild which is pretty cool. I actually think that that's really interesting because this is now the second occurrence that a legendary Pokemon has ever been able to spawn in the wild, aside from the Lake Guardians, Uxie, Mesprit, and Azelf, which of course are regional and are much rarer to find in an unknown. So, but I still think that that's really cool. However, getting them is not easy because, for one, they're legendary, so they're really hard to catch, and they also have the flea rate of an Abra. So if you don't get it on the first try, they're very likely just gonna run away on you. So, that's kind of like the unfortunate thing. But it'd be cool if I could actually get one, just to say that I caught one that was in the wild. Also, as you progress through the special research, you will actually get a free encounter with a shiny red Gyarados, which, that's awesome. I love the red Gyarados. It's just such an iconic shiny, and probably one of my favorite ones. That and Umbreon. Also, at the very end, you'll have an opportunity to get a Celebi that when you catch it during the tour hours, it'll come with a special brand new grass fast move magical leaf so we just completed the first set here we're going to go ahead and claim this and we are going to claim our rewards the um cosmetic wings and i believe this is where we now choose our path 
Okay, yep, yeah, so choose Totodile, Cyndaquil, or Chikorita. I think I'm actually going to go ahead and go with Chikorita, just because uh, Meganium is really good for the um, Go Battle League, and it wouldn't hurt to have all that extra candy from doing this. So yeah, we are going to go ahead and go with Chikorita. Okay, oh, so this is where we get our free Chikorita right here. So it is not shiny, but that's okay. We're just getting it as part of the research. All right, so getting into the third set here, we have the first set, which was already completed. That gave us our Chikorita. We also have catch 15 different species of Pokemon for 25 Chikorita candies. Evolve your Chikorita for a Poffin. And the end set rewards are a Lugia mask, a random Pokemon, and some candies here. I don't know what the candies are, though. And also, I did forget to mention, there are actually rotating habitats. So this event pretty much functions the same way as last year's Go Tour Kanto event did, in which there are rotating habitats, and pretty much everything else is the same. However, these rotating habitats are based off of, like, certain towns and other locations throughout the Johto region. So the first hour, which is what we're still in right now, 30 minutes in at least, is uh, New Bark Town. The second hour is going to be Violet City. The third hour is National Park. Fourth hour is Goldenrod City, and fifth hour is Mount Silver, in which different Pokemon will be spawning throughout those different hours. And after the Mount Silver hour, we'll get a second whole another rotation of these same five hours, and then the final two hours of the event is basically a combination of all of them. Alright, so we have just arrived at the pavilion, and upon doing so, I have actually completed at least two of the collection challenges now, which is the gold exclusive incense stuff, and the new Barktown collection, which I believe that is now two out of the ten collection challenges now complete. And also, Unknown is spawning as part of the event, because obviously, Unknown is, after all, considered a Johto Pokemon. However, the only letters that are appearing as part of the event are, are the ones that spell out Go Toward Johto. I think the only one I don't have is J. So we're going to go ahead and actually now claim our collection challenge stuff here. So that's that one, and we're now going to go ahead and claim this one too. Yep, this is the one that offered a Politoed, that's what I thought. So we're going to go ahead and capture this Politoed here. Alright, so we have now swapped over into the Violet City Hour, and I just happened, very, I just got very lucky and I happened upon a Wild Entei off of the Incense. But, since we'll very likely lose this one, it'll probably run away, I'm going to go ahead and just like, you know, try my luck at it, just use a Golden Raz and an Ultra Ball and hope that we can secure the catch. No, it's probably going to run. Yeah, it ran. I also did finally complete the third set of the research, so we will claim this Poffin and get the Lugia Mask, the candies. Oh, it's led about candy. Okay, that's what it was. And see what the reward Pokemon is? It said Dunsparce. Okay, so that's what it is. So we have to defeat three Team Go Rocket members, purify three Shadow Pokemon, and earn 3,000 dust. So, pretty simple and straightforward. We do actually have a Rocket Balloon floating up top, on top of us. Okay, so we are here now at All Park, although I'm not sure how long we're going to be here for, but I did actually got really lucky and I actually completed my 2000th Legendary Raid. As you can just see here, I now got this uh, Platinum Medal for that. And also, I happened to get really lucky and I got a Shiny Whooper, I guess, off of my Go Plus. My Go Plus picked it up for me. This is actually my second Shiny Whooper now. So I can now complete the shiny family for it. So far the only shinies I have are that and that spin rack that I caught earlier. So we just got the Ampharos and also the hour is actually about to change over. It'll be changing over into the National Park Hour. Funny I mentioned that because we are in a park. It's not a national park, but it's a park. So I actually just did a Raikou raid with a friend and I actually just got a shiny one out of this raid. So fortunately, since it is a shiny, and since shiny Pokemon out of raids are a 100% catch rate, we are going to use just a regular Pineapple Berry just to get some extra candies and throw the ball to secure the catch. And there we go, we got ourselves the shiny Raikou. This is, I think this might actually be my second or third one now. It is now actually the National Park Hour as well, so we got all these Giraffe Rag here and a bunch of other things as well. I'm not sure what, what is going on, like my game is like completely like frozen up. Alright, so I actually just got really lucky and I happened upon a shiny giraffe rig, which is actually a new shiny as part of the Go Tour event. 
Any Jotun Pokemon that weren't already able to be shiny beforehand are now shiny as part of the event. Giraffe Rag here obviously being one of them. I just love the blue nose on it. It's just so cool. I definitely want this shiny, so I am using a Golden Res and an Ultra Ball to secure the catch. And also Mantine, uh, Ty Rogan Hitmontop, the Fampy family, the Remoraid family, and Corsola. Uh, Corsola actually was supposed to be released shiny as part of another event, but that event got postponed obviously, probably because of COVID, but I don't want to say 100% for sure. But there we go, we at least now have the shiny giraffe rag, which I, I love, I'm in love with that shiny, that's just so cool, I actually got one. Alright, so we just did yet another raid and I happened upon a shiny Suicune this time. So same deal as last time, I already went ahead and took my snapshot for it so it would count toward the research. And we're going to go ahead, use a pineapple berry for extra candies, and we're going to throw the ball and secure the catch. Alright, there we go, we got the shiny Suicune. And also depending on what ticket you have, either gold or silver, um, certain Pokemon are shiny boosted extra over the other version, Shuckle of course being one of them for me, however, um, other things like Larvitar are only boosted for silver version, and unfortunately I do not have silver version. So we do have our Violet City um, collection challenge done, so we're going to go ahead and claim that, and we'll see what we get, of course, my game. My game is like still freezing up. My game has just been janky. It like literally just like froze up and now it's just like it's not doing anything. Alright, so I guess the National Park Hour has actually given me quite a bit of luck today because I just now happened upon a shiny Sudowoodo. This is my first shiny Sudowoodo ever. So we are going to Golden Raz it, throw the Ultra Ball and hope to secure the catch because Sudowoodo is actually kind of a hard Pokemon to get. Alright, we got ourselves our first shiny Sudowoodo. And the only things I need now to complete the collection challenge for this set is uh, Shuckle, which I actually just passed one and didn't catch it. And there's also a Galoom that I need. Everything else I'm pretty much squared away on. I'm also checking these Sun Currents because I do have a boosted shiny rate on these as part of Gold version. I need to actually put my um, eggs in incubators here because we benefit from one fourth incubator distance today and we also get to hatch Johto babies and hopefully we'll actually hatch like a shiny Tyro Ogre or Cleffa. I think those are the only like real Johto babies I need uh, shiny. Alright so we now have a bunch of our two kilometer eggs hatched and we have nine of them ready to hatch so let's breeze on through this and see what we get. Alright, so we have officially swapped over now into the Goldenrod City Hour, and on screen right now I have a shiny Wobbuffet. So we are going to use a Golden Raz and throw the Ultra Ball. I don't like it though, because it's a female one, and it's got that lipstick on it. I just, I don't like it. I don't like female Wobbuffet, it's ugly. But I guess the pink actually suits it in this case. So we just got our first shiny Wobbuffet. It's still shiny nonetheless, so I'm definitely going to keep it for that reason. Alright, so I've literally now had to like refresh my game a couple times. I think my phone's actually just overheating and it's causing my game to lag. Either that or the ser or the servers are just overloaded because everyone's wanting to do this event. But my game is just janked the jank up. Like, literally. But right now we actually have a shiny Meryl. Not like I really need it because I already actually got, the got my shiny Meryl that I needed from a previous event. But we're still going to catch it nonetheless. I have a Golden Raz and you know what? I'm actually going to step down and use just a regular... Great Ball instead of an Ultra Ball, and my buddy actually just gave me a catch assist. But I'm actually catching, as I was saying earlier, I was, I'm actually trying to catch Merrill's because Azumarill is amazing. It's absolutely god tier in PvP, and I'm trying to actually get an XL one, which requires the attack stat to be lower. So that is why I'm actually currently chasing it. I'm just trying to shiny check Pokemon, and this thing is just doing its thing. I think my phone's just overheated and I'm literally just trying to stick my phone outside the window. Hopefully not too far that it'll like fall out or anything. I'm just trying to keep my phone cool. Hopefully it'll actually actually cool down and then my game will actually be a lot easier to work with right now. So we're gonna go ahead and actually try to claim my research here if it'll actually let me. Yeah, it is just lagging like so bad. I just got some Bampy candies out of that. Let's see what we get here. It's a Quillfish. Okay. We need this also for the um, collection challenge, so I will catch it. 
So we now have the following new tasks to do as part of set 5. We have complete 3 research tasks, make 5 great throws, and catch 20 Pokemon. All of this is pretty simple and straightforward. I think this is actually the set where we get our red Gyarados, I'm pretty sure. So we will definitely be catching a ton of Pokemon and completing research tasks like crazy. Ooh, ooh, here we go. We got a shiny Remoraid. Heck yes. We just got ourselves a shiny Remoraid, and you know what? I mean, it's low, but I also don't want to lose it because it's a brand new shiny. This is also another go toward Johto shiny that's been released as part of the event, so we will use a Golden Raz and an Ultra Ball to secure the catch. We're definitely getting this purple Remoraid. I actually like it. It looks so cool. There we go. We got shiny Remoraid. And we also have the um, Legendary Beast research here done, but I'll probably actually do this off screen because it'll be very tedious and it will take a while to catch them, regardless if they're in research or not, so I'm, I'm just not going to mess with it. Alright, so it's been at least now a couple hours that we've actually taken a bit of a break, but we're back in action now and I just got super lucky and I found a shiny Raikou, not in a raid, but in the wild. Yeah, a wild shiny Raikou. Although, I do have a pretty good feeling that this is going to run away, but you know what? We have a Golden Raz on it, we're going to throw an Ultra Ball and hope that we can actually catch this thing. Alright, and we got an excellent curveball, so hopefully this does something. I really want it. It's still there! Holy crap, it's still there. It did not even run. What? I caught it. Oh my gosh, I got a freaking wild shiny Raikou. Let's see how good it is, I'm really curious. Oh, it's bad, but you know what? It, it, it's shiny and it's from the wild too, so now I can say that I have a shiny Raikou that came from the wild. But we're almost actually out of New Bark Town hour. Uh, we, just co we just got past the Mount Silver hour and yeah, we're pretty much just finishing up New Bark Town hour before the swap to, um, before the swap to Violet City hour. Oh, the Umbreon. Okay, no, it's swapping over now, so I just missed that Umbreon there, so it's now swapping over to Violet City. We also did finally complete the um, fifth set of the special research here, and I'm pretty sure this is what leads to the encounter with the Red Gyarados, so we will see here. It is the Red Gyarados here, which is really cool, so we are going to catch it. And obviously, because it's from the research, it cannot run away, so we will just use a regular Pineapple Berry and just throw a regular Pokeball and secure the catch. Alright, so we finally got the shiny red Gyarados, and hopefully it's a Shundo. That's what I'm really hoping for here. I'd love to have a Shundo red Gyarados. Let's see. Oh, it's crap. Whatever. It's still a shiny red Gyarados nonetheless, so I will take it for what it is. Anyways, without further ado, moving into the next set, we have Evolve our Bayleaf, Power Pokemon 5 times, and Earn a Candy walking with our buddy. Okay, so pretty simple and straightforward. Let's go ahead and see where our buddy is at. Okay, so I just need to feed it another Poffin again if I really want to get candies with it, so... So we will go on and evolve our Bayleaf for the tasks here. There is our Meganium. Alright, so we are here at Friendship Park. Unfortunately, still unfortunately, most of the trail is actually kind of blocked off, so we are now making our way over to Yeatman's Cove instead. But we are still in the midst of Violet City Hour, and I'm still doing my best to just shiny check everything I can along the way. So here we are a little while later, and I came across what seems to be the elusive shiny Mantine. I mean, or at least it just kind of felt like it, just because I've been clicking on every single Mantine that appeared on my incense, and not a single one was appearing shiny for me. But I finally got lucky, and I finally got the shiny Mantine here. We have a Golden Rast, and we're going to throw the Ultra Ball, and we are going to secure this catch, because I love the blue Mantine. It looks exactly how, like, a Manta Ray should be. It kind of looks like it has the same color scheme as uh, Mantyke does. It's preform. And just like that, shiny Mantine has been caught. Also, we are now in the National Park Hour, and we are officially out of the Violet City Hour. Not only that, but we also completed the 6th set of the special research, so we're going to go ahead and claim everything. And before we do, I think another Pokemon appeared on the instance, which we did. It's actually an unknown letter T, which is not shiny. So we got that, and we're claiming our research here, and we'll see what this Pokemon is. It is a Stantler, which we do need as essential for our 
Reese for our collection challenge, so we are going to catch it. Moving into the seventh set here, we have send a gift with a sticker, hatch two eggs, and complete five field research tasks. A little while later and we are now into the Goldenrod City Hour and we are also walking along Yeatman's Cove. But, as you can kind of see, the Ohio River is literally just like flooded right now and I don't know if you can really see it, but like the currents are really moving very fast and there's actually a lot of debris kind of moving along the river too, so it's pretty crazy. But yeah, we're just kind of moving along now. Um, I did actually manage to get myself a shiny sun kern uh, before the National Park hour ended. But here's one thing I do want to add about this is that like this has probably been one of the most elusive shinies for me because ever since it first came out back in 2018, at least I think that was when it first came out, right as the Celebi research came out, this thing has been so elusive to me. I've been checking every single sun kern ever since that point and not a single one had been shiny. So I was very thankful for the for the fact that I finally managed to get a sun kern. Hopefully I'll also get one more uh, before the event actually ends because uh, we did ju just finish out the second um, National Park rotation so that'll probably be it unless I happen to get really lucky during the final two hours and then get a shiny sun curtain. Also check this out I also got like a like this little baby sweet coon with just such a small amount of CP and it's it's just it's cute I like it it's like like very little CP on it and like it's IVs are just like nothing. <laughs> I just, I love it, it's great. So, it's cool that I'm able to like find these in the wild and just catch them. And my dad also got lucky, he got a shiny Raikou of his own in the wild, so that's actually really cool. But oh man, with Goldenrod City Hour now here, there's a ton of Remoraids here to check. So hopefully I'll actually get one more Remoraid shiny and then be able to get a shiny Octillery and then complete the Remoraid family. Also, we did finally complete the seventh set of the research, so I will claim all of these and then claim these rewards here and then move on to the final to the final set. Or move on to the to the semi-final set, I should say. The one that will award us the Celebi. So we did get a hitmon top out of here, so we are gonna catch it and move along. So getting into the eighth set here, we have earn three hearts with a buddy, or make three nice throws in a row, and transfer 20 Pokemon. So transfer 20 Pokemon is going to be easy because I literally filled up my Pokemon box and I need to transfer Pokemon crazy because I want to be able to continue shiny check-ins, so that's going to be crucial. So we have completed our 8th task of the research, so we will claim everything here and get our Hello shirt, the Stardust, and our encounter with Celebi. Oh, but we have to use regular Pokeballs for this, so... Oh, yeah, it's hard for me to record and try to throw the ball at Celebi at the same time, so I will be right back. Alright, so I finally got my Celebi. It was just way too hard for me to try to do it holding my camera and trying to throw at the same time. It just wasn't going to happen without the footage act, without the footage being weird. So, there we go. We got our Celebi now with Magical Leaf and Hyper Beam. Um, it's not bad. It's definitely not the best of all the Celebis I've gotten. It's still a Celebi and it's got Magical Leaf at the same time, so that's really cool. So. Yep, that is pretty much it for the research. So I think the final set is literally just claiming everything automatically and that is pretty much it. But first, before that, I got a spin rack here. Oh, and it's a shiny. I just got my next shiny spin rack right here. So this will be the one I'm gonna turn into area dose to complete my spin rack family. So without further ado, we got a golden raz on it, ultra ball, and we're gonna secure the catch. It's a good thing I actually backed out of the, the menu when I did, because otherwise I probably would have lost that spin rack and I'd just been like, to think that could have been the shiny right there. But we did actually just get the spin rack. We have now officially left Eatman's Cove and are now headed back towards home. But we're not going to go home quite yet because there are still just a few things left to do. But right now we're actually going to claim our research here and then be done with this. So that pretty much completes the special research for the GoTour event. And now 
we are given the next bit of masterwork research, which leads us to an encounter with an Apex Shadow Lugia and an Apex Shadow Hoa with some very powerful moves. And they also supposedly have a new aura that has never been before seen in Pokemon Go. So I'm really curious to see what this aura is, or if it's the same thing as Shadow Mewtwo's, I'm not 100% sure. But this is that is what we're going to be getting out of this research. So obviously the first set here we have earn 100,000 experience. I mean that's going to take a while unless you have like an ultra unless you're about to become ultra friends or best friends with somebody and you have like a lucky egg ready. You'll get that like almost instantly. 100 field research tasks. Yeah, that's going to take a long time. And uh, catch 100 different species of Pokemon, which that should also be pretty straightforward. I mean again it will take me quite a bit of time to do but it should be no problem all right so we are back at home and i've actually been meaning to redeem the rest of my collection challenges here but there are only two more left so out of all the ones that i've completed this now brings me up all the way to eight completed challenges so now me and my dad are about to do some trades and get them out of the way to get the other collection challenge completed So we have officially now done all the trades me and my dad have. Unfortunately we did not get any luckies, although earlier we were kind of hesitant on doing any trades because me and my dad earlier in the day actually got lucky friends and we decided we wanted to make the trade something very special so we waited until we both got the red Gyarados out of the research and then we traded that. And the IVs are alright but I mean it's still lucky and it's still shiny so it was definitely worth keeping. So. Yeah, we got all the trades done. We got all the trades done after that. Unfortunately, none of them are lucky, but at least I was able to knock out the uh, trading requirements, and I was able to knock out another collection challenge, which brings me up to nine completed. And now we are going to evolve our final Pokemon that we need to complete the final collection challenge, which is to evolve a Chansey into a Blissey. And after that, we now have all of the Johto Pokemon evolved. And that will complete the final collection challenge, bringing us up to 10 completed challenges. And with that being said, we have now completed all the collection challenges that the Go Tour Johto event has to offer. So with that, I went ahead and popped a lucky egg because I want to make sure I get all of this experience out of here. So we are now going to claim the rewards here. Alright, so now that the Go Tour event is officially behind us, I wanted to go ahead and take this time right now to show you guys my shiny haul. Okay, so pretty much everything you see here from this spin rack at the bottom right, all the way up to this Suicune here in the top left, is my entire shiny haul. So all in all, this is like 24 shinies. And I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, this is like more shinies than I've gotten out of last year's Go to Kanto event, which I believe that was 21. So yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the most shinies I've ever gotten out of any event. Definitely one of the more notable shinies here is definitely going to be this giraffe rig without a doubt just because again it's a brand new shiny I got it it's as part of the go tour event and not to mention I love the blue on it it's just like I love the blue nose I like the little blue spikes on its back and honestly I feel like giraffe rig is just such an underrated Pokemon like unfortunately it's not good in Pokemon Go but I just I love giraffe rig's design. And I also got this shiny Raikou as I found it in the wild. I'm surprised it did not run away. I have to wonder if the fact that it was shiny prevented it from running away. But, I don't know. But I, I still love it though. I still love the fact that I actually caught it in the wild. And while I did not find a shiny Poliwhirl in the wild, I actually got lucky and found two shiny Seedras in the wild. Now this is amazing. Like, now this isn't my favorite shiny, but at least catching the Seedra allowed me to complete my shiny family and I'm happy with that I'm totally fine with that and yeah that is pretty much it for the shiny haul right here like I love I love this uh, collection I've got not to mention I also got the two spin racks that I can now evolve my shiny family for that and yeah that is pretty much it for that so now I want to talk to you guys about my overall like opinions and thoughts about the go tour Johto event as a whole now, honestly, I loved the Go Tour Johto event. I had a lot of fun with this event. However, there is one thing I have to say about it, is that 
In terms of the music aspect of the event, considering we only got three tracks of music for the entire event, I'm honestly disappointed. I really thought that they could have actually done more in terms of the music that was playing throughout the event. Because unlike last year's Go Tour Kanto event, during each of the rotational habitat hours we got, we got different pieces of music for each hour. And unfortunately with the Go Tour Johto event, we just did not get that. There were only three pieces of music as a whole for this event, and they only played in certain parts, like only one song played for the entire overworld during the whole duration of the event, one song for raids, and one song for wild encounters. Now, while I did love these pieces of music, I just feel like they could have done more. Like, I was really expecting, like, like a Pokemon Go, like, remix of, like, the National Park theme, and especially for New Bark Town. Like, why, why was there no, like, remix for New Bark Town? Now, I know on Niantic's end, they can't please everybody, so... But despite all of that, I still loved, loved, loved the Go Tour Johto event. Now, I did love this year's Go Tour Johto event because unlike the Go Tour Kanto event, there were definitely more things in store for us and definitely a lot of different surprises. Like, for example, I was definitely not expecting to run into the legendary beasts in the wild. Like, that was probably the greatest surprise of all. I just love how Niantic is trying to incorporate like different elements from like the main series games into Pokemon Go and to try to make them sort of similar. Like, for example, like obviously the legendary dogs when you run into them in Gold and Silver, like they had a high flea rate. So whenever you try to like make a move on them or throw a ball at them, they would like instantly run away immediately after. And I just like how they kind of incorporated that element into Pokemon Go. Like, that is just, that's really cool. Like, as much as it is disappointing to those, like, Pokemon Go players trying to catch them, it, it, it makes sense. Like, and for that, I love it. So, I, th I think this gives me some really good speculation for a possible future Go Tour event, if they have it. Which I have a good feeling they will, because obviously we had Go Tour Kanto last year, and if we had Go Tour Johto this year, then that gives me the know that we will have more Go Tour events in the near future. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Now, while I have been a big fan of Johto, um, I will say this, it's not exactly my favorite of all the regions out there. Kanto will forever and always have a special place in my heart just because it's more nostalgic. But in the Johto region, while it is one of the more smaller regions, it's still boasts an excellent group of Pokemon and it also has its fair share of nostalgia and I gotta say one of my favorite Pokemon from Johto ever has to be Lugia without a doubt and I know what some of you are probably gonna be saying yes this is a legendary Pokemon and it's it's not a normal Pokemon and I feel like a lot of people say that legendaries are their favorite but for me Lugia personally just ha like like, for me, there's just a better reason for why I like Lugia. And it's, like, while it is a Psychic and Flying type, I also feel like it kind of acts as sort of like a Water type as well, just because of the fact that it has access to Hydro Pump, which is a very powerful water move. And I feel like that that's just really cool for Lugia to have that. Not to mention Lugia is just such a bulky Pokemon, and it can really take a beating. But in terms of just like regular Johto Pokemon, I'd have to say my favorite or favorites, I guess in this case, would have to be the two Eeveelutions, Espeon and Umbreon. Though more so Espeon just because of the raw power that it has and uh, Steelix. Like Steelix is just amazing. I love its design. It's a very bulky Pokemon. And not to mention it has one of the be it has one of the coolest looking mega evolutions out there. Like it like, Steelix is amazing. Now, one thing I will say about Umbreon 2 is that it has one of the coolest shiny variants out there. Like, probably out of, like, most Pokemon in all of Pokemon. Now, when Johto first came out in Pokemon Go, like, I was very excited. Because, obviously, when Pokemon Go first came out, we only had Kanto Pokemon. And, again, like I said, while I do love Kanto... It, it was just, after a while, I was starting to get so tired of seeing the same Pokemon over and over again, and I finally decided, like, I'm just, I'm ready to see something new. When Johto finally came out, I was just, like, so hyped and excited about it, and I feel like part of that, 
kind of explains why I was a, I was really hyped for the Go Tour Johto event more so than Go Tour Kanto. So yeah, there you have it. That is pretty much all my thoughts and overall opinions that I wanted to share with you guys on the Go Tour Johto event. And like I said, I had so much fun doing the event. I got 24 shinies. That's more than Go Tour Kanto. And yeah, I think I think the Go Tour event has been very successful. And I will be doing my Masterwork Apex research over time, and I will be making a video on that. And I will be sure to keep you guys updated on other uh, Pokemon Go videos as well. And with that, the season of Heritage has officially come to its conclusion. And on that note, I am going to go on ahead and I will end off this video right here. So how many shinies did you guys get out of the Go Tour event? What is your favorite Gen 2 Pokemon? Let me know in the comments section below, but anyways, that's going to be it for me in this video, and as always, if you guys enjoyed it, then please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. Also leave a like and a comment, won't hurt either. But anyways, that is it for me today. I'm BVM Serious, and I hope you guys have a seriously amazing day. Thank you so much for watching.